Hey Cloud Gamers, so today we're going to look at control running on the Shadow PC on the Boost tier and also on the GeForce Now. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of the latest from Cloud Gaming Extreme. Looking at the Shadow PC here, we seem to get a steady 60 frames per second in most of the instances, but as soon as we start hitting the action, you start seeing those frames dropping. And although it's playable, I do find that those drops in frames are quite noticeable in the heavier gunfights and control really does play on these lighting effects a lot. So you are able to turn on ray tracing, however it does render the game pretty much unplayable. As you can see here, the frame rate drops down into the sub 20s and it's really not an enjoyable experience. So although it looks a bit better. The 1080 on the boost here really can't handle ray tracing and I don't recommend trying to use it. So if we go back to no ray tracing, these settings are still on high so you could probably tweak these a little bit uh, to get better performance but you can see here in one of the kind of mini boss fights that those frames again dropping down into the low 40s and something to make note of is if you look at the GPU usage it's actually pretty much topping out. Now I am recording off the same machine as well, but it's not particularly taxing usually. So to see the GPU maxing out here is a little bit concerning. So for control, I don't think the Shadow Boost here is going to be the best option, unless obviously it's the only option, in which case you may want to tweak those settings down from high to get a better experience. Moving over to GeForce Now then, however, with high settings, DLSS and ray tracing enabled at full, we're still getting that full 60 frames per second and it does seem to be capped at 60 frames per second. Recently GeForce Now seems to have upgraded their graphics cards and I have been getting the 2080 scene rig quite consistently. You can see here moving around, it is pretty fluent and you know it does look fantastic with that ray tracing enabled. Moving around you can see all those lighting effects, you get the sheen on the floors and the metallic surfaces and occasionally you see the frames drop down one or two frames during the gunfights which I'm going to come into in just a second. But with everything enabled this does perform extremely well and this is where control plays on all these lighting effects. You can see the lighting reflecting on the floor there and then you've got all these particle effects around the enemies when they're being hit and still all those effects on the floor and all the lighting around is kept. Even on the character model itself you can see those lighting effects lighting up as she runs past. And again the frames drop down to 58 I've seen I think is the lowest but otherwise it plays perfectly fine. So after this gunfight I'll do a bit of comparison of the DLSS and ray tracing modes just to show how much of a difference that actually makes. But I must admit that this performs a lot better than I thought it was going to. Especially with all of the settings maxed out. So moving on to some of the effects here, in the left you can see ray tracing with DLSS, in the middle just DLSS and on the right with all off. So the ray tracing in DLSS definitely stands out here, it does look so crisp and quite photorealistic to be honest, whereas the DLSS only kind of sometimes seems to be a bit overcompensating which we'll see a little bit more as we go to one of the next slides. But zooming into the middle here, you can see, I think I actually prefer it with the DLSS off on standard or combining the two of them. 
DLSS is very subtle, it really complements ray tracing, but on its own I don't feel it does a massive amount of benefit. As you can see here, when you turn ray tracing off, the DLSS kind of overcompensates and doesn't really look right here. So I'd say you either have ray tracing and DLSS, ray tracing on its own or just standard. So going into the same boss fight that we saw with the shadow, again you can see how much more fluid it is. Obviously the RTX 2080 is a far superior card to the 1080, but considering GeForce now is only £5 a month at the moment, I don't know what that's going to be when Founders runs out, but it is a absolute bargain if you manage to get into it. And the control really shows off the RTX's power on GeForce now. Thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest from Cloud Gaming Extreme. See you next time.